Hey everyone, I am Digan Sinchen here and today we will look into some basic features and some interesting structures of a human skull uh, which I studied a lot during my technical seminar on 3D printing the parts of the skull. Most of us think that the skull as a single spherical piece or an egg-like structure that covers the brain, but actually it's not. It consists of 8 cranial bones. This is the cranial part which covers the brain. 8 bones covers the brain. We'll go one by one. This is the frontal bone which makes the forehead and the front part of the skull from the top view. And I'll keep this jawbone, the mandible aside. It's not easy to hold everything together. A pair of parietal bones a pair of parietal bone and a pair of temporal bone this is the another pair of temporal bone here this is the temporal bone and occipital bone this is the occipital bone uh, this is from the behind and this one is the foramina magnum from where the spinal cord leaves the brain and this is the zygomatic arc here down that is sphenoid bone now we look into the facial bones this is maxillar it's called maxillar or the upper jaw and these are the nasal bones and the eye orbitals made up of nasal bones the frontal bone and the zygomatic bones here these are the zygomatic bones i'll keep this aside and of course the mandible which makes the mouth along with maxillar it's the only moving part in the skull the brain dwells the inferior part of the skull with exception for the mandible or the jawbone the rest of the bones of the skull fixes with each other through joints called sutures these are the sutures Sutures are immovable joints at junction between bones of the skull. It's not like the mandible or the joints in the fingers like this. It's more like a stitches, like two bones are stitched together. And when the brain grows, these also like grows along with it. This is called the coronal suture, more like a crown and this here is called the sagittal suture, like the sagittarius pointing an arrow and the squamous suture. The interesting one is the lambdoidal suture. The sagittal suture comes down and splits into two uh, like a inverted Y or a lambda so it's called lambdoidal suture the squamous suture there's another over here Next are the foramina which is any opening or kind of holes in the skull which allows muscles, nerves, arteries, veins and other structures to transmit. Like you can see over here this is a foramen. This is a hole. And you can see a hole over here. This is also a foramen. These are called the foraminas. 
or you can see something here the two foraminas here and this area contains plenty like from the eye for the optic nerve for example there here this one there are many openings wait I'll put there here it connects to the brain this optic nerve path these are the foraminas there are many and the largest one is the foramina magnum where the spinal cord comes out for the spinal cord to connect with the brain then there are cavities in the skull divided into three depressions the anterior cranial fossa the middle cranial fossa this is the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa the rare one the front anterior the middle and the posterior and the interesting and most favorite part is the, this one here where the pituitary gland rests is called cella tersica where the pituitary gland rests the master gland and controls every gland in the body and another interesting structure is this one you can see here like a root like structure here these are formed due to the veins on the arteries which deliver blood to the brain these are formed due to that while well, the brain inside that and one more the last one is the mandible the mandible or the lower jaw or the largest and the strongest and the lowest bone in the human face along with maxilla forms the mouth structure we can say a lot of thing by looking at the mandible this is the mandible it's the most largest strongest and the lowest bone in the human face like we can say the gender age etc by just looking at the mandible itself like the angle of the mandible here this is called the angle of the mandible which is more than 90 degree here it's more than 90 degree which is usually in females so we can say that this is a female skull in males it's usually 90 degrees and if you see here its shape is more like V which tends to be a female one in males it's usually like U shape in females it's V and in males it's more like U so this is another factor and If you look at the orbitals of the eye it's more circular it's more circular in males it's more like a square square orbitals usually males have square orbitals and more prominent in males but here it's not that and more bumpy here near the occipital bone and if you look at the forehead here it's more steep it's, there's a certain depression which is usually in females in males it's a gradual depression but this we can see it's a female skull and if you count the teeth there are almost 14 teeth 
and by combining the upper jaw and lower jaw there are 28 teeth and if you see here these are the wisdom teeth by this we can say that usually wisdom teeth arrive completely around the age of 25 so this skull age we can say roughly around 23 or 22 something between 21 to 25 not more than 25 this is the age of the skull or, or this particular skull this mandible or the jawbone sits over here like this and forms the mouth and there goes the skull cap and there you go forms the human skull isn't it amazing 